Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Brian Bloom, percussionist in the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the keyboard audition piece, Caprice No. 5, from Matteo Carcassi's Six Caprices, transcribed by Gifford Howarth. First, I'll play through the piece for you, and then we'll look at just a few key points that I think will be helpful as you practice and perform this piece. First, I think there's some room for some musical interpretation in this piece. I think while you could get away with playing it pretty metronomically consistent, uh, I think there's a little room. I lean toward playing it a little more uh, push and pull in some spots and giving some flexibility and, and some spaces between notes. And I think that communicates the emotion of the piece a little bit more. In order to make the music make more sense, there's going to be spots where you need to bring out certain voices over other voices. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Obviously, right away, at the beginning, one voice is going to be more important than the other. Right? The, the moving left hand line, I want to make sure that that is brought out a little bit above the, the consistent right hand note. If I let my right hand play even volume with my left hand, or even louder, maybe because I'm dominant right handed, then it's, going to, it's not going to sound right and we lose the music right away. And this is what that would sound like. When we get to the phrase at measure 8 and moving forward, I think it makes sense to bring out the top note in that right hand just a little bit. And then when we get to the downbeat at 12, we're going to bring out the moving left hand note just a little bit more and, and then kind of get, gradually move back to bringing that right hand out. Now throughout the piece, there are going to be several places where you just have to think about which voice is more important. Is it my left hand, right hand? Is it, is it my top mallet, my mallet 3? Certain points, it, it makes sense that you're going to want to go through and identify what's the most important musical line here and make sure that we hear that as the listener. There are two mistakes, I think, in the music, and I want to make sure I point out what those are. The first one is a sticking. Right at the beginning, there's a, a number two, a sticking for number two on the uh of beat one. That should actually be moved over one note to the downbeat of, of beat two. The second mistake is in measure 29. Beat four should be an A natural rather than the B natural that is written. Make sure that that's an A. On the final roll of the piece, I think there are two good options for ways that you could play that. I think you could end the, the roll pretty loud, the way that I did it. Or you could shape it to, to kind of fade out just a little bit at the end of that roll. Maybe a little bit more like the natural decay of a guitar, which is what this was originally written for. So either way, you can make that work. However, make sure that you do strike the last note, all four notes together, before you start your roll. You don't want to start your roll with one note, one hand or the other hand. 
One more reminder, because this cannot be emphasized enough, make sure that you let the music come through. This is more than a technical etude. While it is rather technical at spots, it's much more than that. Make sure that you're always thinking about the music. How can I make this move and, and, and be exciting and joyful like a caprice should be? Always be thinking about the music and make sure that you're, you're having fun with it. Thanks for watching. I hope this video proves helpful to you, and we'll see you on the next one.